Running the numbers on two duplexes in the Cleveland market. John from California, this is another one of your videos. Let's dive in. For the price, I mean, this is actually a really nice house. A little bit more rough, a little more ragged. It's gonna keep those values high. Here's quarter mile comps. There's $260,000 houses right down the street. You'll be able to put your offer through me, and then after you close, Holden Wise, we can handle the property management. We'll even be able to help you with the insurance. We have lenders who will write loans for investors in all 50 states. This deal is 100% James Wise approved. James Wise denied. Hey, John from California. Thank you for getting another analysis. You are starting to stack up the purchases out here in Cleveland. Uh, your portfolio is looking pretty good. You've identified uh, another two duplexes uh, out here in Cleveland. Um, one is very, very high end, which is, um, you know, it's falling in line with the rest of your portfolio. You've targeted incredibly high end stuff. So that's definitely an A-class neighborhood that falls right in. And then your other one was in Euclid. I like Euclid quite a bit, but it's definitely a different uh, type of asset class. Uh, so we're going to talk about all that. Let's get into the very first one, which more or less falls in line with the rest of your portfolio. Same type of neighborhood. And that is 6609 Bridge Avenue, Cleveland, 44102. This is listed at 200000 by a company called Progressive Urban Real Estate. Pulling up the, the map of the listing, if you fade it back out a little bit, all right, you see the big, the big stuff, the big popular neighborhoods in Cleveland, okay? We have Tremont, Ohio City, and Detroit Shoreway. So your property is literally right there on Detroit Shoreway. And just so everyone is aware, like when you're talking uh, Detroit Shoreway, like, cause like, all right, like this is, you know, where the Detroit Shoreway neighborhood is. And then like, as stuff starts to like, you know, go fade out further and further away from the heart, uh, you know, the prices go down, you become more fringe areas. You are definitely not on the fringe um, for, you know, everyone to understand like the absolute, like the pure heart of the Detroit Shoreway is on west 65th like west 65th in detroit is more or less what i would consider like the the prime location the center of the detroit shoreway neighborhood so you're literally right there so like tenants you know they could literally walk to what i would call the heart so you can't be any more entrenched in this a-class neighborhood so you hit a home run with the neighborhood let's go over the property um, first thing I like about this property, it's a side-by-side -side duplex. Uh, I spoke about this in another one of your analyses. Um, if, if you ever have the opportunity, um, if you have two duplex, two duplexes in front of you and you have the opportunity to buy a side-by-side -side versus an up-down, you should definitely take the opportunity to get the side-by-side. -side. Um, that is going to be, uh, far and away the better type of property. Now here's one of the units. Um, let me make that a little bigger for everyone here. Uh, you, like, I don't hate this renovation. I don't necessarily love it. What I like about it, okay, is they did the open concept. Like, it's pretty clear that this did not used to be. This definitely used to be a wall. So they blew that out, and we have, like, a, a somewhat decently high-end-looking kitchen, more or less. Like, we have the backsplash. You have nice you know cabinets but we don't have any hardware on the cabinets we have white appliances in there we have an overmount sink and if i had to guess it's kind of hard to tell from the picture but i i don't think that that's like an actual stone that's probably like a formica of some sort um is this like horrible no uh but it is not necessarily like the most high-end thing i've ever seen like if we go over here i pulled up uh another analysis i did for you 1335 West 65th, and uh, I, I, I took, I was, you know, this is another side by side, and I was talking about the kitchen and that. Let's take a look at that. School, you know, school districts in Northeast Ohio. You'll see that the actual city of Cleveland, the school districts suck, right? They're, they're, they're rated terribly. Um, so, like, if you have tenants that, uh, like, have children, you know, they're typically moving out of the city and they're going to uh, our suburbs, right? So if uh, you're looking for an A-grade suburb uh, for, you know, you're looking to the suburbs for like A-grade school districts and you're probably buying a home. 
what you have here, even though we got a crappy school district, you still have an A grade property though, because a lot of people that are attracted to this neighborhood, they want to be close to that nightlife, they want to be close to downtown, they want to be close to the casino, to the queue. You know, the Browns are supposed to be really, really good this year, right? We got Odell Beckham Jr., we got Baker Mayfield, Jarvis Landry. I mean, we are stacked, right? So they want to be close to all that action, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, uh, you know, you name it, right? These are the folks that want to be close to that action. So typically these folks, uh, I'm not saying none of them have children, but, you know, it's, it's usually not families that are moving into these type of properties. It's young professionals, high-paying jobs, college-educated. They probably work downtown. And this is their style, right? You know, they tend to be on the lower end, right? Not a lot of people uh, above 40 um, that you're catering to in this high-end market in this neighborhood. So really lower people, right? So you want to be, you know, super modern, super sleek. And this is what they did when they renovated this property. Uh, like stainless steel, like I love this 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 hood right here. I mean, that's a that's a big old fridge, and they love this open concept stuff. So, uh, as far as like the actual property itself, the renovations in the kitchen, they totally crushed that. Right, everything is good. What they did in the bathroom, this is great too. You know, just super modern. Like as a matter of fact, you know, I'm 31 years old, and my wife is uh, she's about to be 28 years old. Okay, just to give you, a, you know on the aid spectrum there, and we have, you know, these types of uh, handles. These are in our property, right? So when you're, you're hitting high earners in the, in the lower age spectrum. Okay, so looking at that, like that kitchen and what I spoke about when we were, you know, going over that video, um, like this does not, you know, this isn't far off, I guess is what I'm trying to say, but it, it does not hit that right like this is nice but this is not that um but i don't think it makes any sense for you to scrap all of this i i think that would be cost prohibitive um because like what they've done you know they've done a decent job would i have made these specific decisions no i would have done uh what we've seen in that video the analysis for 1335 west 61st and for anybody else who's watching this who hasn't seen that full video i will go ahead and put uh the link to that in the show notes below because that's really what we want it to look like but this is like so close i i don't think that we need to 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 like scrap the kitchen we do need to do some work though like so you know this room it's like purple and pink like that's gotta go this room's gotta go uh like like this vanity right here this is a nice modern vanity uh but the flooring i wouldn't have went with that flooring that looks like uh more or less like a like a it's like a vinyl product but it's like kind of like a carpet it's like one sheet, really. I don't even know what to call it. It's like one sheet, though. So it's pretty low end. Um, but it's like newer and it's fresh. Like this is new and it's fresh. Uh, so just going through the rest of these photos here, just all these rooms have different colors. Um, and then this is the other unit in the property. And they did some work in this. Like I, I like this look pretty well. You know, this is a pretty good look in the main living space. I like that they got the white. The white's a nice color. It looks like they got like a modern uh faucet but again we don't have like a really nice stone and we have an overmount sink so it's nothing like super special going into the bathroom it's like it's like half a reno right like we have like a newer looking vanity that's like pretty decent like this is modern right you got the square undermount right there that's nice but this is just old you know that you got the off white you know light switch right here <laughs> the trim on that is like a uh, fucking lime green but like the toilet's new right you got a new toilet same thing with the floor they did the same thing like that low end stuff um and then just you know multiple colors here and then this is like a probably the third floor based on the roof line and we're just like pure subfloor here um so some work needs to happen uh but i do not think it makes sense for you to to like go in and do all the work because you know at the price point they're at they're at the two hundred thousand dollar price point did they do the renovations that i like would have done myself no but you have units that are in like a pretty decent shape like they're definitely rentable and they're not going to rent to like super low-end folks so I, I I don't think it makes sense to spend like twenty five thirty thousand dollars per unit like getting that super high end look because we're gonna maximize you know 
our, our rentability because it's a, it's not a single family home. It's a side by side. Like you could get close to two thousand dollars a month renting like three and four bedroom single family homes in this neighborhood. Um, side by sides are the closest thing to a single family home, but they're still not a single family home. So ultimately, you will eventually be capped. So what I think right now, putting a conservative rent roll on it, I would like you to anticipate you getting thirteen fifty a month out of each one of these units which is 2700 a month or 32400 a year. As far as what renovations you need to do to get to that level, I think you should do roughly ten to $15,000 of renovations total, not per unit total. So just in the chart, I'm going to go ahead and put ten. So all in for this investment, I think you want to be around the $210,000 range. And what that should get us, right, what that $10,000 should get us should be uh, – just like some minor cosmetic stuff. Like, I don't want to scrap the kitchens. I don't think they're the best kitchens in the world, but I, I think it doesn't make sense to start over at this point because you're still going to get a pretty decent rent. Like, 1350 are you going to have the highest renting three-bedroom unit in the neighborhood? No. Are you going to have the very nicest unit in the neighborhood? No. But are you going to have the lowest or the crappiest unit in the neighborhood? Absolutely not. And at 1350 you're still getting... Uh, some pretty high quality tenants. So I, I think that would be the smartest thing, right? So just spend like 10 grand, you know, repainting a lot of those bedrooms, making it all neutral colors. The flooring looked pretty damn good in both those units, except for on the third floor. So you'd have to do some flooring there. Um, and just like a lot of paint. And then going in those bathrooms, the one bathroom looked pretty funky. I think you'll need to do like a new tub surround and stuff. The other bathroom, I don't think you really need to do much. That looked okay. Uh, so that would just be very, very minimal stuff. Not the highest end bathroom, but not the worst. So more or less, I'd like you to spend about ten grand, fifteen at the most, and that should allow us to get that twenty seven hundred bucks a month in rent. Now, in the future, after a couple turnovers, when this stuff starts to like wear down and it starts to look a little older, then I think it'd be a good idea to go for the full shebang. But I, I think you got some use out of these units in a very similar condition. I think you're going to get some use out of those kitchens right now. And of the bathrooms, only one needed like a decent chunk of work. And even then, that was probably really just going to be the surround and uh, painting the wall. Like you could rock those floors for a little while eventually they will rip and tear and then when we do that we'll go ahead and put like a nice tile in there so get that high-end look but let's not worry about doing that right now so just going with like a somewhat of a minimalist approach here uh you should be able to bring in 2700 a month as far as your expenses and stuff you know this ain't your first radio you know what we're about to go through i anticipate you'll spend about 135 bucks a month on repairs maintenance vacancy and non-payment and capital expenditures as far as your taxes are concerned should be about 167 a month as far as insurance my guy kevin my associate at our insurance company the hogue insurance agency he will be able to insure this for you i got his contact info in the show notes below for anyone else who's watching this show and has never uh heard of him or known that we do insurance uh it's all about investors, guys. The whole purpose of the insurance company is to sell insurance to investors, okay? And we are all about, you know, reducing your premium. We're not dealing with owner-occupied people. Just like I don't sell real estate to owner-occupied people, we don't do insurance for owner-occupied people. So our whole goal is your goal. It's to slam your premium as low as possible so you guys can cash flow as much as possible. So uh, we should be able to get you a nice landlord policy for about 125 a month, I would anticipate, on this property. Water sewer, that's tough, but I, you know, I got to say about 150 should be fair. And then lawn care, uh, it's like 33 bucks a cut. We do it uh, 16 times, so that averages out to like 530. I think I got a typo there. It actually should say 528, but I wrote 538, so that's fine. Average is out to 44 a month. Uh, may have a small little dollar math error in there. Uh, don't crucify me for it. These are variable expenses anyway, so if uh, a $10 over the course of the year affects your investment, you're probably not a good candidate uh, to be investing in real estate halfway across the country. Uh, and then lastly, my fave, property management. Uh, another benefit, right, to you, John, is you always target these A-class properties, and we cap our management fee. Like our management fee is ten percent, but we cap it at a hundred bucks a month. So even though you're bringing in twenty-seven hundred in rent a month, you're only going to have to pay us two hundred bucks a month. So we're only going to charge you hundred bucks for each of those units, no matter how much above that one thousand dollars we get you. So total expense-wise, right? 
you should be spending roughly $1,091 a month operating your property. Now, this is another benefit to buying A-class stuff, right? Like, uh, John, I'm sure you've heard of it. If you haven't, I'm going to tell you, along with everybody else watching your show, um, there's something called the 50% rule in rental real estate. More or less, if you buy a rental property, more often than not, your gross rents, it should be about 50% of your gross rents should be the cost to operate that property. Now, 50% of the gross rents here would be $1,350. So you can see our operating costs are lower than 50%. The higher class asset you go, the better that spread becomes. Like your operating costs are typically, you know, going to go down as the quality of your unit goes up, right? So that's something to think about. I anticipate after factoring and all that, you bringing home $1,609 a month on this or a total of $19,308 a year. If you were to finance that bad boy, you're looking at a mortgage down payment of fifty grand. You know, the tenants, let those tenants pay off your $150,000 mortgage. Your payment would be low. It would only be seven sixty dollars a month or ninety-one twenty dollars a year. And then uh, with the amount of money coming in, your NOI, that $1,609, it's going to leave you with eight forty nine dollars a month in your pocket or ten thousand one hundred eighty eight a year and then to calculate your cash on cash return what we need to do is we need to take the amount of money you're putting in your pocket at the end of the year and divide that by your your costs going into this property so that's typically just your down payment but don't forget on top of that down payment we have factored in that you're gonna spend another ten grand so factoring in that additional ten grand you got sixty K into the deal cash you should be at 16.98%, right? So 16, 17% on average is what I anticipate you'll make off of this property. And as you know, it's an A-grade neighborhood. I do think that uh, going forward, we can probably eventually, like your ceiling for rent, if you like extremely decked out these units, like did everything that we did in the video I showed you at 1335 West 61st. If, if you had kitchens that look like that, I think we'll be in like the 15 plus range. Um, but right now, just with what we've done and a little bit of minimalist stuff, I think we'll be at 1350 a unit, which is why I want you to save that money right now and just do that minimal stuff because I think you have several years of use out of these kitchens. Uh, so because of all that, I think this is a solid deal, John. I like this one. This deal is James Wise approved. It's going to fall right in line with the rest of your portfolio. Now, the second property you've given me is something that's like totally different for you. This is like a, a 180 from what you normally do. Uh, so quickly, I'm going to go to a word from the sponsor of today's show, and then we're going to get into the numbers and into the strategy on the Euclid duplex you've picked out. Discount Property Warehouse, founded by real estate visionary Robert Thiel, author of The Short-Term Retirement Program, is a complete turnkey solution for acquiring cash-flowing investment properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Our turnkey properties include a third-party home inspection, new HVAC with 10-year warranties, new dimensional roofs, competitive price-to-rent ratios, discounted property insurance, in-house property management, private financing, and much more. At Discount Property Warehouse, we have a staff of licensed agents standing by, ready to assist you with every aspect of the process. Call us today or visit us online at discountpropertywarehouse.com. Holton Wise has a worldwide audience of real estate investors. If you are a lender, home inspector, or anyone else with a real estate related business, who would like to increase your sales and exposure with an ad in one of our videos, go to HoltonWise.com today. All right, John, welcome back. So let's get into this one. This is, like I said, man, this is different from what you've been doing. Uh, this is 636 East 222nd, Euclid, Ohio. It's listed by a Century 21 realtor for $89,900. let us take a look at the photos first first okay here's the front um here's one of the units okay these hardwoods these are in pretty darn good shape all right they're a little dated but they are in good shape i don't think we would need to refinish those we'd want to keep the budget low on a reno here 
nice brick okay it's brick all right now we have a pretty modern looking vanity that's nice that's something i like looks like we got nice modern tiling there so if it looks like we're going to have like a relatively cheap renovation the concrete work all looks pretty good which is important now in euclid this is something that's going to be new to you john uh the point of sale inspection okay euclid requires a point of sale inspection so that means anytime a seller wants to sell a property in euclid the city has to come out and they issue violations uh based on the outside of the home it used to be inside and outside but uh, a lot of people in ohio have challenged the validity of these point of sale inspections uh, because many consider them to be unconstitutional i myself am also one of those people uh, it's infringing on property owner rights um and the cusp of the legal argument. I'm by no means a legal scholar, so like, don't quote me on exactly what it was, but more or less the cusp on a lot of these legal arguments that led to the landlords and the property owners winning these cases is uh, forcing, um, like, because the cities used to do it, they had to do interior and exterior. So forcing the owner to allow the city inside their home to, to, to inspect it was essentially uh, going against our constitutional rights of unnecessary uh, search, right? So that was the cusp of the legal argument. So what a lot of cities did is they either got rid of the point of sales, like Euclid, or I'm sorry, not Euclid, uh, Lakewood, Lakewood, Ohio, um, suburb of Cleveland, a West End suburb, very nice suburb, a lot of rental properties out there. They used to do point of sales on rental properties. They are no longer doing them because of this stuff. They just got rid of it. And then a lot of cities uh, like Euclid and I think Garfield Heights as well, they have just recently switched to we're only going to do the exterior. We're not going to go inside. So they no longer have that unreasonable search issue. Uh, so I think Euclid's only going to be doing exterior, and the listing agent, they have not said a word about the POS in their description. They, they didn't even mention it. So um, if they want you to assume it, I'm not sure. It doesn't say at this point. I don't think at this price point you would want to assume it, so you'd have to have a clear point of sale. Now, sometimes when you're dealing with these sellers, they're sellers that are not capable of it. So if you're dealing with a seller who hasn't mentioned any of that in the listing. It's possible the seller isn't aware there's a point of sale. The listing agent might not be aware there's a point of sale because we get a lot of these like residential realtors. They don't often work in neighborhoods with point of sale inspections. Like more or less, the majority of all the point of sale inspections, guys, that was in the neighborhoods where a lot of real estate investors are working and a lot of these properties have become rental properties. Like you don't see point of sale inspections in neighborhoods where they're like 100% owner occupied and all the houses Houses are four or five hundred thousand dollars. It's more for you know our CB class rental properties. It's you know a way for the city to try to maintain the condition of the property. Uh, whether or not you believe that's a valid way to do that, uh, that's a topic for another day. I'm just giving you uh, the facts, right? So what I'm trying to allude to here is a lot of times you get realtors who are only used to working in those nice high class suburbs and every once in a while you know their clients who buy their family homes through them have like one or two random rental properties and they sell them and you get an agent who's not familiar with that stuff hell all I do is rental properties and they're changing the POS stuff in all these different uh, municipalities so often uh, that I'm finding myself having to play catch up and I'm a little confused I have to rely on uh, my sales assistant sometimes to tell me what the most updated way we need to handle the point of sales in each of the cities because they're all changing and they're all slightly different and then of course the cities they get like new employees in there who are kind of confused right like I'm sure anybody who's ever called the building department of a municipality anywhere in America uh, the person answering the phone isn't always necessarily the brightest bulb in the sky or the brightest bulb in the ceiling or whatever right like sometimes you could ask a city uh, five city workers, five questions and get five different answers um, or the same question and get five different answers rather. So we run into all that. So uh, in an extremely long winded thing that I'm trying to tell you is I don't know if they are aware that there is a point of sale, but it's good that we don't have any issues with the concrete because that's like going to be the biggest thing. And you don't want to pay for an inspection appraisal and the seller agrees to handle all the point of sale repairs for you. And then the seller gets to the point where they need to start doing them and they realize they're in over their head and they don't have the money to do it. It's a low likelihood that, that that would happen here. If you were to make an offer on this property, I would want you to ask for a clear point of sale. Um, but I'm not 100% sold on this property uh, for you. And I would like to go in with the why 
as far as the rent roll goes, I have a, a three bedroom and a two bedroom. The three bedroom, I think we're going to be able to rent for 800. Now, if you've watched a lot of my content, John, uh, you'll see that that $800 a month is a, a little bit higher um, than what I would normally say for a duplex unit in Euclid. Normally, we'd be in the mid sevens, high sevens. Um, that's a little higher. And then, likewise, the two-bedroom is a little bit lower. I've put that two-bedroom at a very low rate, only $600. You know, we could be in the sevens for that, low sevens for that, uh, for two bedrooms. So out of this, I think you'll get a total of $1,400, $800 and $600. And the reason why I think the one unit is going to be slightly higher and the other unit is going to be slightly lower is if you look at this property, this is not like your traditional duplex. Like, this property was not built originally to be a duplex. This is like a bungalow, right? This was originally built to be a single-family bungalow. And according to the listing, we have – it's a big – it's a big space, right? We have 2,952 feet of square feet here in this property. Um, but I believe the majority of that is downstairs, and I assume – that what they've done is they've converted the upstairs to a, a much smaller unit. So I believe your your upstairs unit is always going to be much smaller than like comparable duplexes. So I've given you a lower uh, rent estimate for that. And likewise, your downstairs is probably going to be a little bit bigger than the majority of duplexes often are. So I've given you a slightly higher. So that's good and bad. I think you're always going to have like a, a really nice, simple, easy experience renting out that downstairs unit. But... That is one drawback to this property. I think you might often have issues with the upstairs unit. Now, I'm just on Google Earth here, and I want you to just see, like, right here, like, these are, like, traditional-looking duplexes, right? That's preferable, honestly, right? Like I said earlier, the first property that you had me uh, look over, the one I did, James Wise Approved, that's a side-by-side -side duplex. So if all things are being equal, you have the opportunity to go up, down, or side-by-side, you got to go side by side, brother. Now, here, what we have is if you have the opportunity to go with like a traditional up-down or what this is, which is more or less a conversion up-down, I would always go with that traditional one because you're going to have two traditional units that were meant uh, to be multifamily. Whereas this one, I just think with the upstairs being small, you're always going to have kind of like a runt of a unit. Uh, so, with that said, <clears throat> I don't necessarily know if I want to James Wise deny this deal for you or if I want to James Wise approve it. I just want you to be aware of what you know, you're going to be in for. You are always going to have one unit that is like not to, perf to perfection, okay? That is one thing to know. But the price point on this is pretty good, right? With, you know, price pretty much fixes everything. At 89900 as far as the condition of the units, I think they're in okay condition. I think you're really only going to need to spend around five grand putting this thing together. So that would be an all-in investment if you bought it at list of under 95000 And 1400 bucks a month in rent for under 95000 in a neighborhood as nice as Euclid, that's a damn good deal, right? Like, I love Euclid quite a bit. Like, they opened the Amazon Fulfillment Center in Euclid. So $800 a month tenants, $600 a month tenants, those are the kind of people that Amazon is employing. you got a great tenant base there, okay? Those people are all making 15 bucks an hour or more. So these are the, the, the right kind of people that are going to be attracted to your property. Um, so for those reasons, I like it. I don't like the layout of the property, but it's getting increasingly harder to find duplexes in Euclid for under 100K, right? Like if you were looking at like a nice traditional uh, up down, like the ones we saw on the screen here, let me pull those up again, like down the street, like you're not getting those for under 100K anymore. Um, and those will probably, each one of those, assuming they're two bed, one bath, which is what they probably are. Like these kind of duplexes, you know, you got a bunch on the street, right? This is one side of the street. There's one, there's one. That looks like another one. And then going over here, this property, the property you're looking at, it's uh, it's this one. And then right down over here, you got some more. Here's another three. Um, these are probably going to rent for about $750, $750 each unit. And uh, you're probably going to need to spend... You know, as of right now, like as of today, you know, you'd probably need to spend like maybe like 115 or so to pick those up. 
So with all that said, man, I guess it's really going to amount to the price you're paying, right? You're getting a pretty decent discount. You're going to be all in for ninety-five grand if you bought it at list. If you do make an offer, I think you should start in the low 80s or even the high 70s. Maybe you start at like 76, 77, and if you could pick this thing up in the high, high 70s or low 80s, maybe it makes sense, but I just want you to remember you're always going to have that issue with the layout. Um, and I think, you know, perhaps you might see a higher amount, a more frequent amount of turnovers in that upstairs unit. I want you to be cognizant of that. But if we run the numbers, as you see from the chart, I mean, the numbers are pretty solid on the deal, dude. Like, you know, repairs, maintenance, vacancy, non-payment, CapEx, 70 bucks. Taxes, you're in Euclid. Euclid is one of the highest tax municipalities in the Cleveland market. So with what you're typically paying in Cleveland, 2.79%, you're paying a higher rent in Euclid. So keep that in mind. That's going to eat into cash flow. So that's 252. Insurance uh, for this one, because the value is lower than the previous property, we should be able to insure that. Uh, like I said, my guy, Kevin, he'll take care of you. Uh, his info's in the show notes. We should be able to insure that for 80 a month. Water sewer, again, 150. Uh, I like to factor about 75 bucks a unit. Odds are good you're going to have more people uh, living in your unit, uh, the larger unit, the downstairs unit, than you will upstairs. But I just kind of they evened out. Lawn care averages out to 44 bucks a month. PM should be 140. So. Of the fourteen hundred bucks you bring in every month, you're going to burn eight seventy six of that on the expenses, okay? And if you'll notice, the property previous to this, right? When we talk about the fifty percent rule, right? That was an A class property that brought in less than fifty percent, right? You burned up less than fifty percent of the gross rents. Um, with your expenses. This property, lower class property, so the rents are going to be lower, um, but we have higher taxes, and of course, a lot of the other expenses are still going to be just as high. We are spending more than 50% uh, of our income on the expenses. So that's going to leave us with 524 at the end of every month on average. Just so everyone is aware, these are averages. It will not be like this every single month. You know, some are going to be good, some are going to be bad. Just to clarify that to everybody out there. Uh, so on average, this property should net you 6288 a year. So going deeper into the numbers, right? Our total investment, the 899 if you bought it at that price, again, I don't necessarily think you should buy it at that price, but I can't guarantee the sellers will accept a lower price, so I like to run these numbers on the list price. So if you bought it at that price and then you put five grand into it, then you got the tenants as I suspect you will at eight and six. If we're all in for ninety four nine, uh, that's a six point six cap, okay? And after you pay off your mortgage, because you're gonna have uh, you know mortgage payment every month three forty one. Um, after you pay that off, you're going to end up with 261 in your pocket of free cash flow. That's an average of 31.32 a year, and that is a cash on cash return of 11.4 percent. That's respectable. And another thing I want to note, just so everyone is aware, when you do your cash on cash return, when you're calculating these numbers at home on the other properties you guys are looking at, you take your net cash flow after mortgage and you divide that by the amount of cash you have in the deal, which would normally be your down payment. So in this case, 22475 But do not forget to factor in that $5,000 because that is actual cash out of your pocket. So in this case, we don't do 3132 divided by 22475 We do it divided by 27475 because you need to put up that five grand. Because there's no scenario where you're getting 1400 bucks a month in rent with the unit exactly as it is. We have to do some work. So with all that said, man, are the numbers respectable <clears throat> on this property at 89.9? Yes, an 11.4% cash on cash return in a relatively decent, stable neighborhood that I happen to like quite a bit. Yeah, that's fine. So in that, you know, looking at it like from that in a vacuum, I could say, that, you know, this deal could be James Wise approved. However, at the same time, John, um, for you, you know, the entire time I've been working with you, your biggest thing has been you want quality properties over uh, quantity, right? And you've been a guy who doesn't necessarily care too much about cash flow. You're looking for long term. Um, do I think this is a respectable property? Yes. I like the neighborhood. Yes. But uh, 
you're always going to have the odd duckling. And um, for some investors, I don't think that's that big of a deal, right? Like, I don't think this is going to inherently be a bad property. I think it's always going to be a good property. But just based on, like, your portfolio and what you've done, I don't know if, like, you're the guy that wants to have an ugly duckling uh, or an oddling in his portfolio. You've stayed very consistent with everything you've done thus far. And uh, so for that reason, it makes me want to, James Wise, deny this property for you. I'm not opposed to the idea of you expanding your portfolio into Euclid. I think that's a good play. I like that area. But if you did, I think it would make more sense for you to get one of those traditional true duplexes, a duplex that was built to be a duplex, those brick duplexes that I showed you earlier. I think that would be something that would fit your portfolio better. Now, all that said, if you can go in and aggressively negotiate with this listing agent and, and pick this thing up for, like I said, high 70s or really low 80s, maybe it's something you want to do because I do think it'll make you money. It's not going to lose you money. Um, I just wanted you to be aware of those factors and the fact that, uh, you know, you're always going to have that odd duckling and, you know, that could create additional problems, man. And they're kind of unforeseen. Like, I can't exactly quantify to, like, I can quantify to you that you're going to lose some money in that rent, to build, uh, rent amount for that unit because it's smaller, but I can't exactly quantify to you uh, how much more frequently people are going to move out because the unit's odd. But I can tell you from experience, you will see more turnover by having an abnormal unit like that. Uh, so I'm going to have to leave it up to you, bro. Uh, you know, you're building up a pretty decent-sized portfolio. You know what you like. You know what you don't like. I don't think it's a bad investment, but I don't think it necessarily fits into what you are specifically doing. Uh, so this deal is neither James Wise approved nor James Wise denied for you, John. Uh, that is actually a first on the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I've always given everybody uh, a thumbs up or a thumbs down. But for you, I'm going both of them, man. I, I don't know what you want to do. Um, that's it. That's all I got for you, John. For everybody else who's watching, John is a, uh, you know, he's a seasoned vet at how this process works. Uh, so I don't need to explain it to him, but what he already knows, you know, and he's watched this video about two months ago, um, is after these deals are sold, I do release them publicly on the MLS Search and Analysis Show. So if you are a first time viewer to Holton Wise TV and you're interested in learning about real estate, do yourself a favor and smash that subscribe button and you could actually view all of these analysis that I've done for my clients like John and a bunch of others. You could view any of these videos. You know, I got a ton of them on Holton Wise TV. Take a look. All the shows are between a half hour and an hour long and we just go through the numbers on everything. And when you're ready, when you're actually ready to buy properties, you can order your own uh, MLS search and analysis. This one, John, he finds his own properties, and then I run the numbers on them for them and give him my opinion. But some investors, they just give me their criteria, and I go out and I find stuff that comes closest to fitting their criteria. Uh, so if you go to HoltonWise.com, go to the Property Search tab, you can get your own analysis, or you can also... Uh, make sure you're checking out the investment property for sale tab. Those are properties that Holton Wise is selling. We are the number one seller of rentals in the Cleveland market. So all the properties we sell, they come with a full video tour as well. We give you the information you're going to need as an investor. Uh, but just so you know, though, our demand is incredibly high. Uh, so a lot of folks, they're finding they're getting outbid because every one of those properties, guys, when those shows launch, we typically get 20, 30 uh, investors trying to bid on them at a time. So if you're, you know, looking to buy some properties you're seeing off of there you better have your ducks in a row you got to have your financing squared away you got to be aggressive and you got to be ready to make offers right after watching the show um, and if you don't have lenders guys just shoot me an email jameswise at holdenwise.com i'll get you my list of lenders um, and they'll be able to approve you uh, it doesn't matter where you live as long as you live in any of the 50 states in the usa you got good income and a solid debt to income ratio my lenders can approve you guys uh, for these investment properties, and all you'll need to do is put down 25%. So like for John here, that property, if he does decide to buy it on East 222nd in Euclid, you know, even though he's got to invest a total of $95,000 if he bought it at list, he's only going to have a cash outlay of $27,500. Not bad. And the other property, the one I do really like for him, you know, we talk, we're talking numbers-wise, it's a $210,000 investment, but what's cool 
is only 60000 of that is actual real cash coming out of his pocket. The under $150,000 is being lent to him by one of my lenders, and those tenants paying thirteen fifty a month in rent, those guys are the ones who are actually paying off that lender. That's why I love real estate investing. That's why so many people build their net worth through real estate investing, guys. You take out a loan, right? So you, you see a property you like, and you find someone to loan you money to buy that property, and then you find someone else to pay off the loan for you. What type of business is better than that, guys? That's it. That's all I've got for today's show. As always, I'm James Wise with Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. For the price, I mean, this is actually a really nice house. A little bit more rough, a little more ragged. It's gonna keep those values high. Here's quarter mile comps. There's two hundred sixty thousand dollar houses right down the street. You'll be able to put your offer through me, and then after you close, Holden Wise, we can handle the property management. We'll even be able to help you with the insurance. We have lenders who will write loans for investors in all fifty states. This deal is one hundred percent. James Wise approved. James Wise denied. Rent Tech Direct provides you with an easy to use yet robust platform for managing your properties, complete with its built in reporting and accounting system that can be customized to fit your business. For property managers, you get advanced features like simplified owner distributions, automated management and placement fees an owner portal, plus the software is certified for trust accounting. All this comes backed by the highest rated customer support team in the industry, certified by third parties and ranked number one by our clients year over year. You get unlimited free access to our US-based support team by phone, email, and chat, who will help you getting started or anywhere along the way. Cleveland, Ohio is widely considered to be one of the top rental markets in the entire United States. This is because here in Cleveland, our housing prices are low and our rental prices and demand are high. At Holton Wise, we provide the complete turnkey solution for all real estate investors, whether they are local, out of state, or even abroad. As real estate brokers, we will provide you with agent representation to help you buy properties ranging from single family homes to large apartment complexes. We even have referrals for lenders who can provide investment property loans to investors located in all 50 states, allowing you to capitalize on the use of leverage or other people's money. We have referrals to top-notch title companies so you know that all of your transactions are safe and secure, with every single property being delivered to you with clear title. Once you close on the property, we have an investor-focused insurance brokerage who can handle all your property insurance needs. This insurance brokerage handles auto, home, life, and business policies, but they specialize in working with policies for landlords. We also have full service property management. We can handle all rental property advertisements, tenant placement, rent collection, evictions, maintenance, landscaping, construction, and repairs. In addition, Holton Wise also offers digital media and education. One day, when you are ready to sell your investment, Holton Wise, as the number one seller of investment properties in the greater Cleveland area, can market your property in a video just like this one to our worldwide base of investors who are looking to capitalize on the high cash flow opportunities in the Cleveland, Ohio market. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.